Since Terminator Genesis is coming out, I figured I'd do an analysis of The Terminator, 1984. It came out in 1984. The story. The Terminator is about a machine that wants to stop a mother from delivering a child that lives... Well, basically, he, the child's the leader of this resistance group that fights against the machines that were created by this dystopian, evil, sort of this militaristic corporation that looks up how to make all these kinds of weapons for the government and stuff. It's a sci-fi classic story that's always memorable. Five out of five stars. Style. This was such an interesting classic. It's a little beat over your head with the tech noir sign. But it's actually not really a noir, at least from what I know of noirs, but maybe I don't know enough. Sarah Connor is a femme fatale, but the police in the story actually inhibits it, unlike most noirs. There's no real detective. It has a lot of unique stuff to it. It's part sci-fi with the entire robots and nukes taking over the world. It's part romance. It's part chase film a la The Driver or Smokey and the Bandit. Watching Nick of We Live Film's analysis of Back to the Future, I couldn't help but think of The Terminator part 2 and mentioning it. As I mentioned before with the car chases and the time travel elements in an 80s film. 5 out of 5 stars. Action. This is a great action movie. Like, some some stories aren't about action, like uh, Blade Runner, but this this is exciting. This is a very. Com it's not as commercial as T two was, but it was still pretty commercial. It had these awesome looking cars. It was sort of like a Michael Bay fetish before Michael Bay fetish. James Cameron was the original Michael Bay. Uh, don't quote me on that. If you see Mike. Not Michael Bay, uh, James Cameron, though, because The Terminator is a freaking awesome film, unlike Transformers. There are some problems with The Terminator fights, like, it's not like a Jackie Chan action scene where you always see Jackie Chan get beat up. Over The Terminator, you always see the special effects, so you see the wear and tear of off its, like, scratch. It'd be cooler if, in a future film, you see, like, the paint... Or some rust go on the Terminator's body later on. The action scenes sort of remind me of how Chappie just kills everybody with no reactions when it's getting shot at. I wonder if that was done intentionally by the great, what's his name? We know him, the South African director. I'll, my, I'll write it down later in the, you know. The scene where it just crashes the car to the lace station is freaking hilarious. It's like Japanese paper walls or something, but it's great. And the suspense that James Cameron uses for the film, for the action scenes with the Terminator, is just great. Because stuff like Hitchcockian sort of... The suspense is so well, like... And Sarah... Sarah and Linda Hamilton does such a great job at building up all the excitement with all the crazy. Great job. Five out of five stars, James Cameron. Themes. There's a lot of different themes in this film. Fear of foreign stuff. Fear of robots. Fear of corporations. Fears of Nazis, Japanese, Russians, Cubans, and others making nuclear bombs who aren't the U.S., the fact that the Japanese economy, in addition to the German, were better at developing steel, indicating how irrelevant the U.S. was becoming, indicating how the end of the scene where a machine destroys another machine that's trying to kill humans, such as a press destroying the Terminator in the end. It takes place in a factory, of all places. A factory, a symbol of the corporation. Something that was dying in the U.S. at the time, but 
sort of grew despite that. And I idea for a sequel, maybe, people. The idea of corporations making nukes to make money that can destroy the world was something that everybody knew about at this time and was worrying about. This sets up a lot of stuff in the superior original sci-fi classic RoboCop by Paul Verhoeven. Five out of five stars. The acting. The acting is just so good in this film. Michael Bain as Kyle Reese really should have been associated with the greats, such as Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Dustin Hoffman. It's one of the best portrayals ever in a film. As the paranoid military man, Kyle Reese, who seems to be this very scary, unlikable guy. Sort of like a, not a hobo, a junkie. Hobo junkie. And you don't know anything about him prior to the film. So you don't know what's going on. The story in the beginning of Tremere is unclear. And that's, maybe that's what makes it a horror actually. Um, like there's this killer. Well, you already know who the killer is, but you don't know why he's killing there's no facts. There's no evidence. It's a testimony. Anyway, you find out who this killer is and who the other guy sent from the future is. Sent from the same type of device that helped send the guy to stop the killing of a woman. And when you do that, I even ponder if there was this commentary on how Arnold was this white collar bodybuilder. Michael Bain was like this skinny guy in the eighties with this poor perception of himself. Explanation of how everything goes is sort of, sort of comes out of nowhere and that just shows James Cameron's great amount of directing to give the audience the amount of patience to Believe all this stuff, despite not being told in the beginning. The same could be seen about Linda Hamilton's white collar character, and how she goes from the sweet Valley High girl who listens to the new kids on the black like music, to becoming this woman who just sh shoots up a Terminator, tries to blow it up, then says, "You're Terminator, motherfucker!" In the end. What a great find by James Cameron. Again, what I said about the noir aspects of the film, the police officers don't have a lot to do, but it's given this unpleasant feeling of the police officers not knowing that Sarah's actually being in danger by this sci-fi-ish character, which no one would really believe in real life, because, I don't know, maybe Rob Bagger's right about the AI takeover not being possible. But in any case... It's sort of, the police are from this three-way triangle with the Terminator and Sarah and Kyle Reese trying to slow down both of them, trying to stop only Sarah well, while at the same time stopping Kyle Reese but saving Sarah and then failed to do so at the climax of the film, which is freaking awesome. Oh, Arnold, finally tipped. Put in a role where you're taken seriously. Seriously, he's not. There's not too many roles where they play him as a Austrian bodybuilder, to make him credible, and believable and dramatic. So there's not a lot of roles that work for him. But like James Cameron said about his voice and his physique, being intimidating, having this movie presence to him in the film, like it really added to the film. There are well. Can, Commando was a comedy too. Anyway, I forgot what I was saying, and five stars out of five stars. The Terminator is the shit. Watch it. If you don't mind a time travel plot that makes no sense, and Terminator is a blow up, but don't get destroyed.